Warning! This video contains frank discussion of matters of sexual morality. Just thought you might want to know. Hey! Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today. The Ten Commandments. So far, we've talked about the first five commandments, and we've been dealing with the sixth, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Finally, it seems like a good idea to address sexual perversions. What are they? Are they against the sixth commandment? The word perversion isn't used in the Catechism section on the Sixth Commandment, but the dictionary defines it as an aberrant sexual practice or interest, especially when habitual. The first thing to remember in talking about perversions is that they begin as mere desires, and as we've discussed before, desires by themselves aren't sinful. Sins are acts of the will. Therefore, in the earliest stages, and as long as they don't lead to sexual misconduct, desires of this type aren't really wrong. However, just because something isn't wrong doesn't mean it's safe to dwell on. For example, if your neighbor is keeping a large gold bar in the middle of his lawn, you may desire the gold, but that doesn't make it safe to fantasize about stealing it. These are the kinds of things that tempt a person into sin, when they choose to become preoccupied with the thought of sinning. However, perversions can be more than just thoughts or temptations. Sometimes a person takes action based on their perverted temptations. In the case of actions, and even intentional thoughts and words, we need to ask ourselves, is the action lustful? Are we placing a lesser good of sex over a greater one? Is the act slash word slash thought sexual in nature? Is it an act, word, or thought? If the answer to these questions is yes, then we should conclude that it violates the Sixth Commandment. Most perversions also draw the focus of sex off of the important primary goods of the act and towards something else, like obsessing over the person's age, height, weight, race, or something else like that. People who fall victim to perversions in this way may start to objectify other people, thinking of them only in terms of whether they're my type physically, rather than caring about having a mature, full relationship. No sort of healthy relationship can work if these kind of incidentals are the first thing you think about. This is even worse, however, when the perversion attracts someone towards a type of person who can't physically engage in sexual relationships or marriage. For example, pedophilia. Children haven't reached the age where they can engage in marriage or sex, much less make mature decisions about doing so, so no form of healthy sexual relationship is even possible with them. Therefore, it's simply impossible for some kinds of sexual desires to be fulfilled. And often, even when it is possible, the urge needs to be resisted when we're in danger of treating sex in a badly ordered way. We just need to have faith that God will recognize our efforts to resist temptation and make good on his promise to give true happiness to the faithful in heaven. Happiness we can't always get here on earth, no matter where we may look for it. So, to sum it up, desires aren't wrong, but intentionally giving in to those desires is if doing so involves making a lustful decision. Next time, what's stealing? What's implied by the Seventh Commandment? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.